Good evening. So now we are back to lecture 2 part 1. Now that we know single value types, integer, float, boolean, string and date time which we haven't learned yet but we will, we are ready to store more than one values into a variable. As before this variable will have a name and a type. Consider this variable as a big bag into which you can stuff items. Right? We have two basic options and a third one to which we will come later. List, it is represented as within the square bracket. Square bracket, please do not forget. Tuple is represented within a circular bracket or an elliptical bracket. Now the very big question is why should we use a list or a tuple? What is the main function? What does it do? If we anticipate that in future you need to add more items in this variable bag, then we use list. For example, now let's see this. Variable bag and we use list. For example, suppose you want to store daily bank transactions of a customer you will use list. Since a customer can do any number of transactions, we don't know beforehand how many there will be. Right? So currently we are in a situation whereby we are not allowed to venture out of our homes. We cannot visit the banks because there is a lockdown. But the moment the lockdown is lifted, we go to the bank and we might end up doing a lot many transactions that we were doing in our day-to-day lives right so in that case something that can be changed in the future we will use a list something which cannot be changed like a customer's bank balance which cannot be altered we will use tuple let's see so however if you think you want to stop anybody from making any kind of changes in the variables bags content then use tuple important here see this word tuple t u p l e so suppose for the same customer we want to store days and bank balance for 31 days of january then we must use tuple this is because once the day is over you don't want anybody to go back and change the balance for the day of course if i have one lakh rupees in my bank today which is the 17th of july i do not want anybody to change it to 10000 rupees tomorrow so when the bank office will use python to run their code they for the customer's balance they will use tuple, the elliptical bracket. But if they have to store the age of the customer, which will change every year, right? Every year I they will have to add one plus, right? Because every year we are aging by one year, one extra year. So in that case, we will use the square bracket called the list. Good enough? So how do we use a list or a tuple? Very simple. On the left hand side you gave a name as I told you variable and on the right hand side you put a square bracket or a elliptical bracket and within the bracket you put all the elements separated by a comma. Very important. So this comma is very very crucial. Do not forget, comma is important. The comma is very important and you must use it. How will you store 10, 25, 45, 70 into a list and how will you store them in a tuple? Please pay attention because your entire Python programming is based on list, tuple and something else called dictionary which we will come to later. But the entire Python programming is based on list and tuple.
because when you are using dictionary you will have to use a tuple or a list so let's understand so I have list underscore 1 equals to in the square bracket 10 comma 25 comma 45 comma 70 and I close the bracket please note there is no comma after 70 because that is the end right so please note that here if you see there is no comma fair enough moving on to the next one list underscore 2 equals to Sachin Tendulkar because it is the name of a person we all know who Sachin Tendulkar is he is a batsman Indian batsman we put the name in quotes comma 44 could be his age comma 50,000 or 5 lakh rupees comma false tuple on the other hand will be passed in a circular or an elliptical bracket same thing Sachin Tendulkar 44 5 lakhs and false now suppose we made a mistake and we want to change the third element from left now this number is going to be 5 lakhs right how do we change it to 60 or maybe we do not make a mistake but in future there is a compelling reason to change the third value from left how do we do it now you are understanding what I'm talking about right here the value has been given as 5 lakhs I want to change it to 60 now as I told you in the beginning in a list you can change the figures for a later date but when you pass this in a tuple you cannot do so once you pass something in a tuple it is stored forever you cannot play with it because it is very very crucial so how do we change indexing now one thing you must remember in Python counting starts from 0 and not from 1 and counting ends at minus 1 indexing what is an index consider a train right train has different bogies it has an engine many bogies and in the back there is a guards cabin consider each bogey as an element in the list or tuple so if you start counting from engine the bogey numbers will go from 1 2 3 4 5 right up to 12 suppose there are 12 bogies if you start counting from the guards cabin then the bogey number will go backward from 12 11 10 9 so on and so forth after up to 3 2 1 so you can count from either ends one is increasing and one is decreasing I have highlighted this in red for your understanding very very crucial and important as well in Python the first bogey from engine side has a roll number of 0 and the first bogey from the guards cabin which is at the end of the train on the opposite side of the engine the roll number has minus 1 the same thing that I just told you right so counting one moment counting starts at 0 and ends at minus 1 very very important register this for the rest of your life Python starts at 0 ends at minus 1 please pause and take time to remember this concept from left to right the roll number of bogey starts from 0 and goes on increasing by 1 while from right to left the roll number of the bogey starts from minus 1 and goes on decreasing by 1 now very important how do we use this information this is how we use the information suppose we wish to go back to the nth element from front or minus mth element from back 
of the list or tuple called A, then we see the following. If the element roll number is n from left, remember the roll number starts from 0 from left as I told you. Counting starts at 0, ends at minus 1. Hashtag A in bracket n. This is a list. If the element's roll number is minus m from right, remember the roll number starts at minus 1 from right. Hashtag A in square bracket minus m. So suppose the list is A and it is a list of players. Now these are all Indian players. A equals to definitely because these are all names and they are all separated by comma so they are different from each other. So every name will be passed within quotes. Double quotes or single quotes up to you. No mixing of the quotes though. So Sachin, Virat, Dhoni, Mitali, Saina and Sindhu. Notice below the use of square bracket which is square after the name of list to access this element. A0 will access the first element from left. Y as I told you counting starts at 0 not 1 so in the 0 position here here we have such an so this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4 and this is 5. If you are counting from the left hand side, right? So this is counting that is starting from the left hand side. Now I will clear this out. Say for example, counting is starting from the other side. So if this is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, excuse my writing and minus 6, right? So this is how the counting will start. Now why, um, you know, make it so complicated? Why not make it simpler? Let's see. How do we do it? So for that we have a tool called indexing. A0 will access the first element from the left and will give such an as output. A3 will access the fourth element because counting starts from 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3 will be actually the fourth element and not the third element. So on the left hand side you add 1. On the right hand side you subtract 1 because a starts from 0 counting starts from 0 not a so a3 will access fourth element from left which will give Mitali as output and not Dhoni a minus 1 will access the first element from the from right and will give Sindhu as the output a minus 2 which I showed you will access second element from the right and will give Saina as the output right below the A list and access individual cells in new cells. So we stop it.